Recently, I came across of this article, where the authors claim to virtually reduce the speed of light to less than 2 meters per second, which allowed them to measure the very famous effect of special relativity, the Terrell Penrose effect. So, what is Terrell Penrose effect, and how do they manage to slow down the speed of light? And is this another confirmation of special relativity? Special relativity teaches us that moving object will be Lorentz contracted by a gamma factor. So if you had a rod that is originally one meter long, if it moves at the speed of 80% of the speed of light, it would be just 0.6 meters long. So you'd expect that if you created a snapshot of this object with a camera, then you would see it contracted. However, this is only true for one-dimensional objects. If you are in three dimensions, Terrell and Penrose showed that you wouldn't see a contraction. The object would appear the same size, but rotated. A snapshot on a camera can be understood as event when all photons reach the lens simultaneously. But if you have an object with depth, the light from different parts of the object has different time to travel to meet the lens. And therefore, in a single snapshot, light from more distant parts of the object must have been emitted earlier, so that they all meet at the lens at the same time. But if the object is moving, this creates distortion, where more distant parts of the object will appear to be further left against the direction of motion, which creates elongating effect. So as they show in this article, if you have a ball moving at the velocity of 0.9c to the right, it would be Lorentz contracted like this. The ball is oriented in a way that the north pole is facing towards you, and the outside green line is the equator. But if you created a snapshot of such ball, then this is what you would see. The Lorentz contraction is exactly compensated by the elongating effect I showed you previously, and you will see a ball of the same size, but rotated. And if you bring the velocity to the extreme, then the ball is rotated by almost 90 degrees. This effect is also nicely demonstrated on Wikipedia, for a ball, but also for a cube. But to observe this effect, you would have to accelerate macroscopic objects to the velocity close to the speed of light, which is completely impossible with the current technology. We can only accelerate small particles, like protons, for example. So how the authors of this article avoided the problem. Have you ever seen a footage like this, where helicopter rotors seem to be rotating very slowly, yet the helicopter doesn't fall onto the ground? Well, it's because it isn't rotating slowly. It is just a synchronization of the camera's frame rate and the rotational frequency of the rotor. So the rotor can be moving very fast, but if your camera has a frame rate, that is exact multiple of the rotational frequency plus some small time delay, it can create an effect of slowly moving rotor. By this you can create a virtual reduction of the rotor speed. Similar technique can be used to virtually slow down the light itself, providing you have an ultra-fast camera with a gating times around 300 picoseconds. So they used 1035 nanometer laser from Coherent Group, producing a 1 picosecond long laser pulses at 2 MHz repetition rate. The wavelength is then halved to 570 nanometers using VBO crystal. And then the beam is going through a strongly diverging lens with a focal length of 25 millimeters. Oh, by the way, you wanna know what software I use to edit this PDF so easily? It's called UPDF 2.0, and it is one of the most useful things you can have on your computer. Because editing PDF is really hard, but with this software you can edit any text as if it was a Word document. You can write the text, delete it, style it, you can add a link to a certain web page that you can click on, you can also add some annotation to a text, or you can just place the annotation anywhere you want. You can do even such things like changing the background, and also the most common features like adding a signature, stamp, or a flower. Really, there is so many tools that I can share like 10% in this video. You can also add an attachment, like a real file inside, easily organize the pages, 
lower the export size or add a password to the document if you are worried that somebody could steal your physical theory. Moreover, there is an integrated AI that has many features that you can check out, for example, summarizing the document or explain parts of it. Also, there is a deep research feature where you can explain the topic of interest and it will find all the relevant articles for you and make a PDF document of the overall review. And you can ask the AI questions about it or you can just pick individual articles. Which honestly is so much value for the money because the cost is like one sixth of the price of Adobe. And honestly, I think it's better product. So if you want to check it out, you can try the link in the description. You can get a nice discount there. Now let's talk about this experiment, how it was actually made. So the setup is the following. You have the ultra fast camera, an object which is a sphere in 3D, the laser which sends a pulse to the lens, which spreads the pulse in such a way that the entire object becomes illuminated. This laser is then connected to the camera through time delay generator. This delay generator increases the delay between light pulse and each snapshot by 400 picoseconds. In this time, light travels 12 centimeters. So after each laser pulse, camera detects different slice of the object due to ultra fast gating times of the camera. Since the light has to travel both ways, the distance between two slices corresponds to the half of that, which is six centimeters. Overall, for each position, they captured 17 slices and put it into a table. Then they move the object by beta times the distance between the slices, which for the velocity of 0.8c is 48 millimeters, and repeat the process. Overall, they repeated the process for 32 different positions and two objects. The cube with a velocity of 0.8c and a ball with a velocity of 0.999c. Now, if you want a screenshot of moving object, then you have to take the diagonal snapshots of your table and put it into a single image. So these are the results. Here, there is a static Lorentz contracted square for control. Here, there is a square moving at the velocity of 0.8c. So you see that it looks like rotated square. And here there is a ultra relativistic ball moving at the velocity of 0.999c, which looks like a rotated ball. If you wanted to create a movie with 30 frames per second, you would combine all these diagonals into sequence and you would have a relativistically moving object where the velocity of light would be 1.8 meters per second. Sadly, I don't have the access to all the data, but there are few important comments to all of this. First, could we say that this is another confirmation of the special relativity? And the answer is no, because this analogy experiment only captures the visual effect of a fast moving object due to the limited speed of light. These pictures look exactly as they would if you had a ball or cube moving at relativistic velocities. But I said that this optical effect would cause the object to have elongated appearance, but not the actual Lorentz contraction of a fast moving object. And therefore authors artificially contracted the objects before the experiments. As you can see in this picture, they used already contracted sphere and already contracted cube as if they were moving at relativistic velocities. And this optical effect caused them to stretch back, compensating this contraction effect. So this experiment is not the confirmation of special relativity, but if the special relativity is correct, then this experiment is confirmation of the fact that if you took a snapshot of a fast moving object, then it wouldn't appear contracted, but it would appear the same size but rotated. So it is a confirmation of an effect within special relativity, which we consider to be already valid. If you want to experience the terror rotation and other relativistic effects firsthand, there is a nice game made by people at MIT, where you collect these balls and slow down the speed of light in this virtual world. The more you collect, the slower the speed of light is. And if you collect all of them, the speed of light is the same as the maximal speed of your character. 
And apart from the nice visualization of Doppler effect, you can notice that when you move forward, you see the distances increase rather than decrease, which is caused by the aberration of light, which is a stronger effect than length contraction. But it is just a visual effect caused by the limited speed of light. In reality, the smaller the speed of light is, the faster you travel through the map. If you look backwards, the aberration causes visual contraction. But when I move sideways, you can notice that the rocks are kinda rotating. And this is the terral rotation effect. This effect is stronger the slower the speed of light is. Currently I'm only missing one ball to complete. So let's find it. So now, when I collect this ball, I can almost reach the speed of light. You see that the distance seems to be increasing, but suddenly I appear at the end of the map, because in reality the distance is shorter. When I move sideways, everything is rotating. The one thing I don't understand is why developers want that to play as long as you want, once you collect all the balls. So, thank you for watching this short video, and I see you next time.